Welcome guys to another episode with Antagonize. Today we're going to be talking about X79 versus X99. Let's keep the intros brief. There are a lot of details in this complex market. The X99 platform is in many ways a piece of shit in the face of consumers on exactly the same socket platform, LGA 2011, as its predecessor. The X99 platform adds very little in continuity, but it rewards the consumer with some extra versus the petty LGA 115X Z titled platform, specifically the Z170s at the time. To say the extras were hand in hand with the release prices is an overstatement. Honestly, some disappointing shit was being marketed to upgrade. But I guess the most important thing about motherboard sockets is the CPUs they support, right? X X99 had two generations of chips supported on the socket, Haswell and Broadwell. Although Haswell in the mainstream market had pretty good performance, at least considering the overclocking failure it, the previous Ivy Bridge had, Haswell E looked quite promising, but it, ha but it had a lot to fall back. Haswell E was powerful, but the high prices of DDR4 as a new technology and the poor overclocking on the low-end chips meant it, was, it wasn't quite future-proof. It just felt like an Ivy Bridge 2.0. And it sucked because Haswell Mainstream was such a good architecture that it even cannibalized its own market with Broadwell. But we all know the story of Haswell Refresh. Of course, after the terrible Broadwell release and the disappointing comeback of Haswell, Intel made the stupid decision to go on with Broadwell E, although not a specifically terrible lineup of processors made literally no difference to 99% of consumers. It just had no compelling selling points. The overclocking was so poor it made Ivy Bridge look good. The only processors in the entire lineup that looked good only mattered months later when Ryzen came out. Only then did they lower the prices and make them look slightly better. But it was already too late. Multi-cores were already in the norm. Now let's head back in time, the time for LGA 2011. It seems that Intel took advantage of AMD's anticlimactic architecture that was Piledriver and steadily set a bar higher and higher for AMD to reach in, 20, in the 2012 lineup. Although the mainstream Ivy Bridge architecture wasn't inherently bad, as explained earlier, it was a bit destroyed by Sandy Bridge's overclocking performance. But it seemed that Intel was more interested in starring in efficiency over rock performance. They probably figured it's the small companies that deal with good prices. Just look at the old days. I guess. Nevertheless, the day and day the day to day enthusiasts had long awaited for the promising LGA twenty eleven socket with almost thirty five power in thirty five percent power increase over the twenty ten LGA one three six six release. Which I own a rig with. I kinda wish they made overclockable overclockable dual sockets, but that didn't really matter for Intel back then. Anyways, back to storytelling. The the X79 lineup was a great success. Amazing overclocking, amazing low-end chip selection, great names such as the 3A20, 3930K, 3960X were all in the news. And the later the later E5, 1680, 2670, etc. Xeon lineup really made it interesting to build in 2012-2013. The overclocking was out of its out of this galaxy. Much better than the mainstream platform's cost efficiency in many regards. Alright, enough with the history babbling, let's talk current day performance. Ever since the release of Ryzen, multi-core used system are more and more affordable by the mainstream, and many good chips went to new i7 prices to sub i3 prices in months. This means multi-core builds are cheaper than ever. Now you might be thinking, what about the part where you review the two contenders? Let's start. What are the benefits of X79? Well, the X79 pl platform is slightly older, obviously, but not enough, not old enough for it to matter by means of noticeable wear on the used systems, on the used items, sorry. Just enough to get amazing prices on everything. A great X79 build would typically use a Sandy Bridge processor due to it having higher overclocks and lower prices because, of its, on, because on this channel we're all about price to performance. DDR3 is significantly cheaper than DDR4 these days, sometimes two times less. Now for CPU prices, the one that might entice the typical consumers are the i7-3820 for a gamer that might decide need more cores later, the i7-3930K for those who want a good compromise on cores, 
price and overclocking. Uh, and the Bind 3930K, which is the 3960X, which is surprisingly cheap these days. Notable historical good price-to-performance chips are also the 1650, um, both generations, the 2680V2 and the 1680, the latter being a great overclocking 8-core chip on the cheap. The 1650 is basically a 3930K. They're typically rare, but they're also cheaper than 3930Ks since people don't know what a Xeon even is. The 1680 is way more rare than the 1650, and I've got and I've not seen one in many months, but a great alternative is to buy a dual socket compatible non-overclockable 2680 counterpart, which might actually be also cheaper. I almost forgot to mention the 10 core 2680 V2, which is a pretty good contender for a budget workstation. But I think two 2680s would be better for multi-core tasks. If you're willing to game on if you're willing to game and work slash stream, the 10 core might be something interesting to look into. It turbos at 3.8 GHz, which is not that bad. Or I think that's actually a BCLK overclock, sorry. My two configurations I would suggest for X79 builds are either the 1650V2 with 24-32 GB of RAM, an overclocked, overclocked to 4.4 GHz or more, or a dual socket 2670s running a large sum of RAM, maybe like 48 GB, something crazy. These two will probably get you to the directions you your build needs to go. One is more gamer oriented whilst the other being more workstation oriented. If you are looking for literally just DirectX 11 titles, um, I do think the 3820 is a very good processor. Um, it's got quad core and it's got 10 megs of, of a cache which is amazing and I'm pretty sure it overclocks closer to 5 gigahertz which is absolutely, it's it's the most you'll, even, you'll ever need. Next is the X99 platform. We've mentioned a lot of its mistakes earlier, and they end up being true in today's world too. People keep on their newer i7 chips too much, and the prices haven't really gone down as much as X79s, but they still have better price to performance than some Ryzen rigs. Buying a used X99 board, 24 gigs of RAM, and a nice i5 5820K wouldn't kill anyone's wallet, but considering X99 doesn't have Xeon overclocking, and it has a terrible upgrading path. The good CPUs are sadly limited to the 5820K, the E5 1520V3, and the slash the 2630E7V3. But the market seems to be inconsistent. So for the most part, these two processors are going to be cheap, cheaper than their newer counterparts, which make them pretty good. But it seems that some multi-core Xeons reach amazingly good prices for their performance. Here I see an E5 2697V3 at $200 in bidding for a pretty early date. This 14 core processor really isn't that bad for some intense tasks and might actually destroy my good deal in others. Other prices seem to try to stay semi-competitive with the Ryzen chips. Here a 2667V3 at $330, similar to an unlocked Ryzen counterpart. Not exactly a game changer. I'm much more interested in the 2698V3 16-core going for $200 as well. That's a killer price. This 2620V4 at 20, 200 bucks as well. I see a trend coming. It's these servers that need the fastest multi-core processors that are swapping out their current x99 systems for the newest and greatest. So plot twist, for the average gamer that's just looking for a good deal, x79 is a great place to start. Amazing 6-core six six CPUs just aching to run your games at some of the highest FPS. But if you're more of a workstation kind of guy and, you've lo and you're have and you looking for more of a multi-core rig, but with gaming capability, your choice is a bit tight for 7 plus cores, right? You kind of end up in my end of the weird builds, or a 1680 or a 2680 V2, or you give up and buy Ryzen. If you're looking for a cheap server, the X99 might be good enough. Um, I do think also blender boxes use a large amount of cores, so it might be possible that X99 platform is very good for blender boxes. I should look into that. Anyways, that's the end of the video, guys. It's pretty long, but it's quite complete when it comes to late 2018 motherboard information. Anything that isn't X79, X99 gaming rig ends up being super cheap, 
and not very future-proof or a bit more expensive per performance versus X79. Hope you enjoyed this video. Any support would be great. I like making these videos and currently we're missing some of the real knowledge seekers in the PC realm to help out those with low budgets or looking for the best bang for buck like myself. See ya.